So I'm not gonna lie, this week has been pretty cool. I was able to get through with uh, one of the major requirements for my major this week for one of my early kind of teaching classes, and I got to do an activity, which is what I'm gonna explain. But this week is also good because work was good, um, and then I got a donut today from my apartment manager people, which clearly counteracts the amount of rent, but it's okay, it's a good donut. But I thought today that I would kind of share the lesson that I had to do just to kind of show how I've had to go through my um, education major and what I've kind of had to do for it. So although my field experience with the after school program I'm working with is not quite done yet, I have like two more weeks which is crazy, um, but I just wanted to go ahead and mention the lesson that I did because I have to return some books soon and if I don't do this video now I won't be able to do it at all really. But as you can kind of tell, I've literally saved the shirt and not worn it until now so that I could surprise you. But the activity that I essentially did was covering the animal known as the woolly bear caterpillar. This shirt is kind of more specific, but I'm going to talk about it later, but it kind of shows you what I'm already talking about. So for my activity, I kind of presented three different books and they're all kind of about caterpillars um, and butterflies and specifically the woolly bear caterpillar. Additionally, I had a little friend that I bought that I got from the festival I'm going to discuss that I brought for the activity and all the kids kept trying to touch it but I was like reading so they couldn't ha. So the main book that I talked about is called The Secret Life of the Woolly Bear Caterpillar and it's by Lawrence Pringle. So if you would actually want the book, there's the name and the author. And I didn't necessarily go through the entire book because I only had about 20 minutes for my activity. But basically I kind of included the important pages from this book. And basically what I introduced was that the woolly bear caterpillar has like an insane amount of legs and eyes. It has 16 different legs and 6 eyes and it has an insane amount of smell like it can smell stuff really well. Specifically, these types of caterpillars are called banded caterpillars because they kind of have like that orange and brown band around their body, which is pretty neat. The next thing I kind of mentioned was how these caterpillars, they have a lot of hair on them, which is very useful in defending itself against predators because like, for example, this page shows a blue jay and it essentially says how the woolly worm will stay safe because animals don't really like having hair in their mouth, which I can kind of relate to that with eating, I don't know, like kiwis and pears because I don't like those, how they have like hair on them. So it makes sense. The next thing I essentially demonstrated and explained with this book was the fact that the woolly bear caterpillar beginning in the fall and through the winter goes into hibernation. And then I explained how the woolly bear caterpillar goes into a cocoon which is essentially made up of silk and hair from the caterpillar. And then once it starts to warm up around spring, the woolly bear caterpillar will turn into the Isabella tiger moth, which this is a way better picture, but it's a really pretty and big yellow and kind of brownish moth. And then the last section in this book that I kind of discussed was the woolly worm festival, which is on my shirt. And essentially this pretty much happens every year except for when COVID happened around like the 15th and 16th of October in Banner Elk, North Carolina. So if you would ever like to meet me in person, I'm going to do my darndest to be at the Woolly Worm Festival like on the 15th and 16th of October in Banner Elk, North Carolina to celebrate the Woolly Worm Festival. The Woolly Worm Festival itself essentially started back in 1973 by a dude named Jim Morton who essentially wanted to establish something that has greater or equal value to Groundhog Day. So what essentially happens at the Woolly Worm Festival is there's this giant like kind of banner with a bunch of strings hanging down and people like pretty much anyone can go to this event and race a worm up the string. The main worm that wins the Woolly Worm Festival essentially determines what the weather is going to be like based on the colors of the worm. Like there's an official judge who comes and inspects the worm to figure out what it means. There's lots of crafts, there's lots of food, I'll have a couple pictures of me being there for the first time last year. There's a mascot. It's pretty cheap to get in. I think it's maybe like $10, maybe a little less, but it's not very expensive and a lot of the proceeds go to Banner Elk for schools and events, so it's pretty nice. But once again, if you ever want to see me, I'll be at the Woolly Worm Festival, hopefully racing for the first time this year and I'm probably gonna name my worm Jeff. So that was essentially the first part that I kind of introduced in my lesson. 
And then the second part of my lesson that I kind of taught was basically just discussing moths and butterflies. The first book I used was this one called Butterfly and Moths, and the first thing I kind of discussed was the life cycle of the caterpillar, which of course the first one is this weird kind of alien looking thing, which is basically the transition from an egg to a caterpillar. And then the second part that I brought up in the caterpillar life stage, if we're specifically talking about moths, is when the caterpillar makes a cocoon for the fall and winter, which I kind of, I think I brought up already, is kind of a mix of the caterpillar's hair as well as silk. Specifically, moths are super helpful, especially to humans, because some of the pictures over here kind of detail how humans have used moth silk to make clothes, which is cool. The next and pretty much final stage of the moth is turning into a moth, and this page basically just has a bunch of different pictures of moths. And then I kind of discuss the differences between butterflies and moths, which one of the big differences between moths and butterflies is the fact that moths typically have duller colors, and butterflies are typically way more vibrant and like, I don't know, noticeable. Another big difference would be the fact that moths tend to be out a lot more at night whereas butterflies sleep during the day. So usually, depending on where you live, you'll see a lot of moths by lamps, which I know is a whole big joke, but it's accurate. There are some moths that are out during the day, but a majority of them are mostly out at night. And then another big difference would be the fact that moths have cocoons and butterflies have chrysalises. <laughs> Another one, which I didn't even realize this was a thing, but it makes sense. Whenever you see moths on like a tree stump or something, their wings are flat on the tree, whereas butterflies, their wings are like up and pressed against each other, which I think is interesting. And then the last thing I discussed from this book was the fact that people will tend to like capture and kind of get moths and caterpillars and this type of equipment, which I kind of brought my own that I got from like Dollar General, so you can get this if you want. And then some people document them with like little recorders, you have cameras, and then some people discuss them and jot them down in little journals. And then I also showed a page where it has different like butterfly and moth homes that you can get. And this one's super small. I would definitely recommend if you're planning on keeping a moth or butterfly to get something bigger than this. And then the last book that I used was this one simply titled Caterpillars. And in this one, I mainly just discussed the fact that woolly bear caterpillars can have different types of woolly bear caterpillars. Like for instance, this is the yellow woolly bear. And then there's a type of woolly bear that has spikier kind of hair and one that I typically recognized as like the fuzzy woolly bear caterpillar. So with this book, I mainly just demonstrated how there's different types of woolly bear caterpillars. There's not just the one. And then one of the things that I put a bit of time into because I tried to make like a woolly worm font was this big old uh, kind of paper kind of post board thing that says woolly worm life cycle. And I printed out a couple pictures and colored them and it shows like the egg, the caterpillar, the cocoon, and then the moth, which is the Isabella tiger moth. So this is just kind of a visualization of the information I presented. And it's in woolly worm font, Yahoo. So the last thing I did for my activity was I had the kids do their own woolly worm race, which I created these little flags and I essentially got like some material and made little woolly worms on them. But basically the rules of the game were I had kids line up like in a line and then what I would have them do is the kid at the back of the line would run to the front and they'd keep doing that until they reached the people with the sticks. So it was kind of like they were, I don't know, role playing as a woolly worm in a woolly worm race. And I wasn't necessarily presenting this lesson and activity to a group of high schoolers, which is what I intend on like teaching age and group wise. This was more towards uh, students who are like kindergarten, maybe sixth grade, like around that age, so pretty young. And although I'm not really a sciencey person, I decided to do this lesson because it's relevant to like kids in North Carolina and kind of the mountains in general, because a lot of woolly worms live in the mountains and North Carolina. I also just kind of really wanted to wear this shirt at the after school program. 
I have to kind of write a reflection paper on my assignment and one of the things is to discuss what I feel like I could have done better on and what I feel like I could have done better on was being better about like controlling when kids had questions and stuff because sometimes I get nervous about like I want people to ask their questions but also have to present my lesson in like a timely manner so if I could have had like not necessarily better control but like bet like a better way to maintain order I guess with my lesson but overall they seemed to really enjoy it and they had fun time racing as worms. I also printed out kind of as like a take home thing a woolly worm and kind of uh, Isabella tiger moth coloring page so they like that as well. But overall, I thought it was really fun. It was really cool to see how I could actually present a lesson to a group of students and make it engaging for different ages of students because not all of them were really young and not all of them were super old. So I kind of had to work around that and see how I could make my activity engaging to a bunch of different people. I definitely do plan on talking about Wooly Worms and the Wooly Worm Festival separately on my channel as like a what the hey kind of video, uh, but I just kind of wanted to discuss this as kind of like what I'm doing right now in school and like how that's been going. So it was very fun and like I'm glad that it's over, but it was fun in the moment and it was very cool to do because I never thought I would be able to talk about caterpillars. But that essentially is the video, so if you have any questions about my activity or about the worms, let me know. But thank you very much for watching. Bye!